The first thing is that the ministries have remained the same. There is a new Ministry of State that will oversee public finances. Priority will be to oversee a new national financial system. In relation to the new Council of Ministers, the President appointed six new Vice Ministers representing different areas with the aim of converting the new Council of Ministers into more of a political rather than administrative body. Because revolution needs to accelerate the process which it is currently undergoing to continue to break with bureaucracy, to break with bureaucratism, and so to make the state more efficient, to make the government more efficient, Commandante Chavez has decided to create a new national leadership body which would consist of this new council of vice ministers. The idea of a congress is still to hold it at the end of the year. We calculate that it will most likely be in December, but the president has not announced it. In relation to the topics that will be discussed, an agenda has been discussed that will focus on the political program of the party and the statutes of the party. We need to adopt permanent statutes. At the moment we only have temporary statutes. The Congress of the party will help to generate a renewed effort on these issues. We are in the process of finalising the recruitment within the socialist patrols and now we need to elect the delegates. The party established the system of political formation Simon Rodriguez which is the system for the formation of CADA. In the first instance, its aim is to train 5,000 CADA on a national level in courses of pedagogical education. The youth, for its part, has been developing for many months the School of Political Formation Online. Within the webpage of the PSUV Youth, there are a variety of topics that are very important for ideological formation. The youth can access this electronically and download the classes for free and then organise study circles where they can analyse the material. We also believe that the Bolivarian Revolution should be characterised not only in the formation of CADA on an ideological level, but should also be accompanied on a practical level. It is necessary to really develop socialism to be able to interlink theory and practice. The first thing in relation to indigenous people is that within this revolution they have been recognised within the constitution and their rights have been preserved and defended by the revolution. Additionally, a ministry has been created that tackles indigenous issues and also works to support and accompany the forms of popular participation and organisation that have been created by the indigenous communities. Another important step that the revolution has made is that it has given the rights over the land to the collectives. So now the indigenous people are owners of their land. It is collective property. The state also guarantees access to health and education, including bilingual education. So they study not only Spanish, but also the indigenous languages. In this way, we are defending indigenous values. It is about regaining our indigenous origins and also to improve the social conditions of a sector of Venezuelan society that for a long time has been excluded. For example, before the revolution, many indigenous people did not have Venezuelan ID cards. The main point of discussion will be very timely. It will focus on issues of peace and sovereignty. Two issues which are central to the international agenda and which should mobilise the political organisations in each of their respective countries. To understand national sovereignty is a fundamental issue, but also that socialist parties should also have an internationalist understanding in our political thought. Peace is essential for the future of humanity. I read in the last few days a thought expressed by Mahatma Gandhi that said that violence in the future should be seen in such an, an abhorrent way as we see the eating of a human by human. We need to develop the levels of consciousness and tackle the issues of peace in the region and peace in the world. 
Today, when we live in a world full of a series of crises, a social crisis, economic crisis, energy crisis, and ecological crisis, and whilst the United States imperialism continues to create points of instability in the region, we see how US imperialism has continued to create instability in the Middle East and feed the conflict in Darfur and other regions of Africa. We also see how US imperialism feeds conflict in Colombia. And so we as revolutionaries and members of a political party that is a central pillar of a new society believe that it is time to get together with other comrades of the struggle. It is a conference not only of socialist and revolutionary parties, it will also include left and progressive parties that identify with the issues of peace and sovereignty. We believe that it is a good time to come together to debate and reflect, but above all else, to understand that political parties are instruments for the transformation of society. They should be able to take societies to a new stage, which would be able to understand sovereignty not in a chauvinistic way, which is insulated and closed, but a sovereignty that is defined by respect for the right of self-determination for the peoples and to understand that the peace is a central condition for the future of humanity.